Electric cargo bikes are becoming more and more popular, and I want to make a quick video just discussing some of the quick tips that I have for people to consider when looking to purchase an electric cargo bike. Now, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Chris Nolte, I'm the owner of Propel, and we have two electric bike shops, one in Brooklyn, New York, and one in Long Beach, California, and we specialize in electric cargo bikes as well as bikes for transportation primarily. We work with people all over the country. Now I'm just gonna get into these tips. Hopefully you guys find them to be helpful. If you have any tips yourself that you'd like to share, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. We also made loads of videos on cargo bikes if you wanted to check them out and learn more about them, but let's just get into it. Tip number one, make sure the cargo bike fits you. Now, important thing to note is that most cargo bikes, they come in one size. It's not always a one size fits all sort of scenario. Sometimes, Riders that are particularly short, they might have challenges fitting a bike, particularly when it's outfitted with certain accessories that might limit the ability for the saddle height to come down or that sort of thing. This is an important thing to note, or even sometimes if it's a taller rider, you might find that the bike feels a little bit too small for you. So if you have the opportunity to test one, certainly a great idea, but if you need some help deciding on some of that stuff, checking out some of the cargo bike groups can definitely be helpful because sometimes you can actually connect with people that are the same height as you and that might be riding one. But an important thing to note is not just about your height, but it's actually your inseam. Just because you're five foot two doesn't mean that you necessarily have a short inseam. If you have a longer inseam, that might be helpful. For example, I'm five foot nine and have a 30 and a half inch inseam, but I've met women that might be five foot four and have a 30 and a half inch inseam. So they'll actually be able to fit in some ways a similar size bike as me, which is kind of interesting. There's a lot of different Facebook groups out there for cargo bikes, so you might be able to connect with other riders of similar heights and understand how those bikes fit them and how they feel comfort-wise. But I did mention, you know, most of the bikes, they're really intended to kind of be one size fits all. So a lot of times they have adjustable features in them. You can oftentimes make certain modifications to make a bike fit a little bit better as well. So changing the seat post or changing the handlebar or stem, that can be helpful to make a bike feel a little bit smaller or larger. And these are important details to consider. But I think for the most part, as a general principle, it seems that most manufacturers really try to design their bikes to be able to fit the widest amount of riders as possible. The next tip is to consider your current and future needs. One thing to think about is like, will this cargo bike actually fit my needs? Can it carry my kids or my cargo or my pet or my commercial goods or whatever they might be? And different bikes are uniquely qualified to do better at different jobs. Like say, for example, if you need to carry two kids, some bikes are gonna do a little bit better at that. Then, you know, maybe you need to carry just one kid, or maybe you need to carry three kids, or maybe you don't need to carry any kids at all. You just wanna carry your dog. If you have a small dog or a big dog, there's different bikes that are gonna be better fits for this. But generally when you get beyond two kids, it's not quite as many bikes that'll actually fit that specific need. Generally get into more like a front loader cargo bike that might have a couple of seats there. Some bikes you can potentially put one small seat in the front and a couple seats in the back, and that's another setup for a larger family. Urban Arrow has a couple different options. You can put a couple of seats in the front. Actually, the Urban Arrow probably can accommodate the most amount of kids because you can technically put four kids in the front and one in the back. That I think was the max that you'll probably see for most of the cargo bikes, at least what we offer. There are some other ones out there that are like a school bus that could potentially carry like five or six kids up in the front. I don't know how pleasurable experience that is riding. It's kind of more like riding a stroller around. If that's what you need, that's cool. If you got that many kids, more power to you. Mostly what we see is like the, you know, one to three kids, occasionally four kids. And I know that I'm talking primarily about kids. That seems to be what most people are going for cargo bikes. But I think that more and more we're seeing commercial usage as well as carrying dogs is a really big one. And generally speaking, I see front loader cargo bikes. I think that that actually goes into my next tip. Like, do you want to carry your cargo in the front or do you want to carry it on the back? There's kind of pros and cons to both setups uh, for a lot of people when they carry the cargo in the front. It's gonna end up having the weight a little bit lower to the ground, generally a little bit easier to balance, but I think psychologically people have trouble wrapping their heads around that because the idea that you have this wheel, it's way out there and the handlebars are not directly connected to it in the same way it is on a normal bike, it's kind of weird to people. But actually when you ride it, it's pretty natural. It takes a little bit getting used to, to kind of wrap your head around it, but once you do, it's pretty comfortable. And that's actually the preferred type of cargo bike that I like to ride 
partly because there's one in particular that I ride that's full suspension and it's just really comfortable, it can go fast and it can carry loads of stuff. But then you have the rear loader and that's very popular partly because it just has more of the feeling of a traditional bike. It's a little bit more standard in its style and that sort of thing. And they're generally a little bit lighter because there's less material to them. You know, the front loaders, they usually have a big box on them. It's just a different experience, but sometimes people get concerned that you can't see the cargo, particularly if you're carrying kids. It's nice to have the experience to have the cargo up front and to be able to look at them and have conversations, etc. I mean, you certainly can still do that in the back, but you know, it's all a matter of preference. But sometimes some of these bikes can have unique features, like we offer one cargo bike called the Turn GSD, and that can stand up on its rear end. Now that bike's very helpful because in an elevator, you can take up less room. It might be easier to say like, tuck it behind a, a door in your bedroom. I guess that's probably the next tip I'd like to discuss is where are you gonna store it? It's not like a traditional bike. So I know one thing that we're encountering a lot in New York City is people have bike rooms, but a lot of times these bike rooms have specific restrictions. Like for example, you gotta hang your bike on the wall. That's not always the easiest thing to do with the heavy cargo bike. Some of them could weigh upwards of 100 pounds. Some of them are a bit lighter, but you know, still it's not so easy and they don't always have the standard size and form. You know, that's one scenario. Another scenario could be just, you know, hey, I have to lift it upstairs. That could be kind of challenging with cargo bikes because as I said, they generally are heavier. Maybe it's you gotta bring it in the garage or whatever. You know, storage constraints can be a big deal. I know a lot of people that will store their bikes outside in New York City and they just put a cover on it and some heavy duty locks and get insurance and you lead the rest up to fate and you know, you just do your best with security and that seems to work for a lot of people. The next one is consider your budget. Now, this one comes up quite a bit. I think a lot of times when people initially consider purchasing a cargo bike or electric cargo bike, they're often surprised at what the prices are because they can be pretty costly. We often get comments like, oh wow, that's as much as a used car or this and that. You know, really, these are very special bikes and they're designed to be very strong. Certainly, you can make a pretty inexpensive electric cargo bike, but how well is it gonna perform? How safe is it? Is it gonna actually meet your needs? Is it gonna bring enjoyment and pleasure to your life? I think you have to weigh the value in this thing. Sure, it might be a little uncomfortable or unfamiliar to somebody to spend this much money on an electric cargo bike or a bicycle just in general, but if you actually start to compare and contrast the different bikes out there, you can say, hey, maybe uh, it might make sense to spend a little bit more initially and not have to upgrade in the near future or have something that might last a little bit longer or potentially be more durable. Now, I'm not saying that every inexpensive cargo bike or electric cargo bike that's on the market is low quality or that it's not worth purchasing. I just think that it's a good idea to try and lay aside some prejudice you might have towards some of the more expensive ones out there and you know, just do your research and take your time and, and speak to other families and see what their experience is. And if you are on a limited budget, considering a used electric cargo bike or potentially financing one could be really helpful. The next important consideration is where you're gonna get it serviced. Some people might be comfortable doing most service themselves and generally the better cargo bikes I think are really not too challenging to service, but there can be some things that are a bit tricky to manage. And I think it's important to consider that not all bike shops would be comfortable working on all electric cargo bikes. Maybe they don't have the space for it, or maybe they just, you know, feel limited in their ability or, you know, they are concerned about liability or whatever. And I think it's important to consider what that experience is gonna be long-term. Being able to properly maintain the bike is going to be very important in finding enjoyment from that electric cargo bike for years to come. Another important detail to consider is the regulations in your area. There's different ones as far as carrying kids. Sometimes it's as young as the kid can be. Like for example, in New York City, you are only able to carry a child over one years old. In other places, it might be the case that you're able to carry the child as long as they can hold their head up. Some other places is just as long as they have a safe place for them to be held. Now, for example, in Holland, it's actually quite common that people pick up their baby from the hospital and they take it home in the, you know, what would otherwise be known as a car seat, but actually, you know, just a baby carrier that 
often works in a car, but it can also work in a lot of bikes. Outside of that, it's like thinking about what the legal restrictions are as far as speed. So some places here in the States, most of them, if you have a 20 mile an hour pedal assist bike, you'll be able to ride it in most places. That one's considered a class one. There's other types that might have a bit more restrictions, like for example, a class two, that one's throttle activated. And there can be some restrictions to where you can ride that. And then there's class three, which is a 28 mile an hour pedal assist bike. And that one can have some restrictions further. I know some people might even say like 28 miles an hour with kids on board, like that sounds crazy. But you know, the reality is that it still is a relatively popular mode of travel. And sometimes you're not always traveling with the kids. Like a common scenario that we see a lot is somebody goes and drops off their kids and then they ride to the office and maybe they wanna ride a little bit faster when they don't have the kids. So having those options I think is important. And I guess that would probably be my next suggestion or consideration to think about the specs that you need. Now you could think about that in the motors, um, really like how much torque. Now, a lot of companies will have you believe that watts is really the most important thing and that's what's gonna actually get you up the hill. From my perspective, torque is really what's most important. That's what's gonna actually help you to really carry that cargo and push you along. Sure, watts can come in as a factor, but actually the measure of torque is a more realistic measure as how that's gonna actually perform. And we tend to prefer motor systems that are in the center because you can use the bike's drivetrain like a transmission and drop into a lower gear. It's especially helpful if you're carrying very heavy cargo or if you're going up very large hills. But having a more powerful motor, a motor with more torque to it, can be very helpful in those scenarios as well. So, you know, just considering in, in what you need and, and that sort of thing. And then considering like, how much battery power do you need? How long of a distance are you gonna ride? This is an important thing to think about. And then on top of that, just thinking about some of the other details like the drivetrain. If you opt for a cargo bike with a belt drive and say like an Enviolo hub, they're generally very easy to use and a lot of people really appreciate that and they're generally a little bit lower maintenance. But some people might appreciate the sportiness of say like a derailleur system. It might feel a bit more like your traditional mountain bike or something like that. And it can often be a little bit cheaper on the front end, but you might end up spending a little bit more money longer term if you ride it a lot and you have to perform maintenance on it more regularly. So these are really all important details to consider. On top of that, you know, thinking about the different tires on the bike, maybe having a bit of a wider tire can make the bike a bit more comfortable. Suspension can also add to the comfort as well. It can also make it easier to handle different terrain. And I think that's the other thing I would really encourage you to consider is what type of terrain you're gonna ride the bike on. Are you riding primarily on pavement? Might you ride off-road a little bit? If you are riding off-road or riding on rougher terrain, you might wanna have wider tires, tires with perhaps a little bit more traction. Maybe suspension is an important factor to consider. And then, you know, other things in relation to terrain and really how you're riding is like the weather, for example. Are you gonna ride in the snow? Are you gonna ride in the rain? Having weather protection on the bike could be really helpful. A lot of times the front loaders, they have really full enclosures to put the kids in. And a lot of people find that to be really helpful. I mean, if your kids are unhappy and feeling cold and wet, they're probably not gonna wanna ride in your bicycle. But if you can protect them from the elements, usually you know, you can dress warm and appropriately and, and you can really ride all year round. There's also you know, some rear loader bikes and it's becoming more and more popular that they create these sort of shields around the kids. Hearn actually introduced one of these products recently and I think that that's a, an amazing setup. I think that you know, finding this weather protection is a big deal. Other details to consider like fenders and lights and that sort of stuff. But one last thing is really transporting the bike. I know a lot of people get cargo bikes to replace their car but there might be times where you want to use the cargo bike in conjunction with the uh, automobile a car a van or whatever say you want to transport it to another home for example this is actually a relatively common scenario considering how you're going to be able to do that uh, is an important detail you know a lot of times these bikes won't necessarily fit on standard racks whether it be the weight restrictions or the wheelbase, considering how you're gonna transport it is important to think about. I really encourage everybody to think about that early on because you don't wanna limit what you can do with the bike or where you can bring it. Once you get used to integrating this into your life, you don't wanna feel like you're not able to get your full enjoyment out of it. But I'm wondering, what's been your experience with these things? Overall, I hope you guys found this to be helpful. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. We're always happy to help 
And I'm sure that other people will be happy to chime in as well. We certainly appreciate that because nothing really can beat firsthand experience. Now, I only have the limited experience I have myself, and certainly I speak to a lot of people and I learn from a lot of other people. But if, if you have your own particular experience, I, I encourage you to share it. So that's it for now. Let us know if there's other videos that you like to see, and uh, I look forward to seeing your future one. All right, well, see you soon.